Hey everybody, Economic Ninja here. Let's talk about silver. Let's talk about the silver price. The reason why I'm doing this video is because I was literally just outside doing a live stream talking about economics, talking about the PacWest Bank situation. And literally I saw gold down just a couple of dollars and silver down a buck. And that's huge. A 5% down day or, or an up day on silver is a big day. And I talked in that and I've got a story about this that just came out two days ago on CNBC. And I want to talk about the psychological issues with the buyer and seller of silver and where we're at right now. Because to say that people are looking for inflation hedges and not only that, but arcs of safety is an understatement. And well, let's just dive into the story and then I'll talk about it afterwards. This is out of CNBC. Silver Institute's Michael D. Rosino says there is plenty of room for the metals price to rise. Silver's price has been on the rise in 2023 with a 7% increase in the first five months of the year. This upswing in prices is largely attributed to the low inventories with the COMEX and London Bullion Market Association. However, despite the positive trend, experts are concerned about a potential dip in demand for silver. Let me stop right there. <coughs> Excuse me. You know, uh, we talk about uh, uh, industrial demand for silver all the time and how silver is used in industrial methods. It's really no longer considered a monetary metal, right? It is a monetary metal with me. It's God's money. It's very valuable, very uh, important. There is more patents tied to silver and the use of silver in industrial uses than any other metal out there. There is so many different ways to use silver. Just the fact that all other metals, the electric conductivity of uh, those metals are measured against silver shows you how vital silver is, all right? And everyone talks about how when the economy turns downward that silver is gonna go down in value because there's gonna be less activity, right? Economic activity, uh, less things being built, so that means less silver need. Well, let me ask you this. Go back and take a look at a chart in 2008 to 2010. When we were in the depths of the Great Recession, to say that we had low economic activity was an understatement. How did the price of silver go? Well, I'll tell you. It went from literally around, I don't know, $9, $11 an ounce, and it topped around $49, $48 an ounce. All right? So you can take all of that away. And what I believe, honestly, is that we are dealing with a narrative. Why? The reason why we have a narrative is because there are a lot of people and important you know, powerful positions money-wise that know that as the price of gold and the price of silver goes up, you got it, their fiat currency looks worse and worse and worse. So right now, this is almost attributed, actually, I believe right now is a battle, a battle of God's money versus Satan's right now that's fighting, okay? Let's dive back into this story a little bit deeper. And again, I'm reading this as silver is down a dollar right now. And do I think it could go down more? Yes, I do. The problem is, Last three years, all we've seen is every time there's a dip in silver, buyers are racing in and the premiums are exploding on physical. So unless you're trading the paper markets, which that's between you and you, I'm, I'm not that guy. I'm a, I wanna own the physical and take over the physical around the world kind of guy. Um, there's an interesting conundrum we're dealing with right now, okay? So let's dive in a little deeper, okay? Michael D. Rosino. Executive director at the Silver Institute believes that silver prices have plenty of room to rise. However, it will be challenging uh, for demand to match the record level seen in 2022 when silver demand hit a dollar, or sorry, a dollar, 120, 124, ugh, stop Ninja, we're getting a little excited. When silver demand hit 1.24 billion ounces. Nonetheless, De Rosino anticipates a 4% growth in terms of industrial demand and 3% demand growth from electronics and electrical sense, uh, sectors. Let's stop there real quick. And there's one thing that Michael is not paying attention to, and that is the panic factor. And when I talk about the panic factor is when uh, things around the world, the globe, ec start changing economically and the news cycle flows, um, people start to wake up and they start to act a little different than they were the day before. And that's one thing that I think needs to be in, in the mix. Right now we are faced with the largest banking crisis since the crash in 29. This is not a joke. Uh, we've already surpassed the great recession numbers. And so people are gonna tend to go to move to safe, ha ha safe havens. We also, unlike the last hundred years, we have the world's economy splitting into two, which means China, Russia, all these other countries are vying for uh, metals and materials right now. Minerals, 
uh, precious metals, things like that to conduct commerce as normal because there's going to be sanctions and all that kind of stuff. So those are two massive uh, factors that people aren't really considering, I think. Uh, he said, speak on oh, this. This is the other thing, too. We're talking about silver on a CNBC story, OK? The more you see the headlines talking about, they don't like doing this, the more people know. All right. Speaking to CNBC, uh, Disrino said, in terms of the price, I think there is a lot more room to rise. However, in terms of demand, last year was a record year with 1.24 billion ounces of silver demand. So it's going to be hard to get to that level. Now, it's really funny that he's talking about all of 2022 having that record demand. And we're only in the fifth month or not even the fifth month. No, it is the fifth month. Man, I'm uh, time's flying of the first year of the next year. You haven't seen that demand. We've got a lot of way to go still. He says here, we are calling for a small decrease in demand, but even so, the numbers are going to be quite, quite strong when you look at the at a five-year step back. So 2023 is going to be another good year for silver. The strength of silver ETFs in India is particularly noteworthy with physical silver demand expected to pick up during the festive season. Additionally, de Rosino also anticipates a 2% increase in mine supplies. However, despite this, he expects 2023 to be the third year of deficit supply. Again, because we're pulling less silver out of the ground than we're using in all kinds of different arenas, industrial uh, investment, things like that. There's literally less metal coming out of the ground. So the more this gets ratcheted up, which I believe this year and next year are going to be a bumper demand for uh, like a bumper crop for silver. I think this is going to be the time where you're going to look back and you're going to go, oh my gosh, why didn't I see it? Now, none of this is financial advice, but when I buy metal, I buy it when it's a good deal. So I buy it when it's on sale. Literally as of the recording of this, silver's down a buck. I am going to go and buy some silver today. I'm calling my broker. If you want my personal broker's number, I'll give it to you. But just so you know, uh, they only deal in quantities over $1,500 or more, right? Uh, to be able to get the best deals and all that stuff. I have a website that I've used too, and it's awesome for being able to literally go on a website and literally go from buying one coin to 10,000 coins and it they ship it right to your house. So I love that company. I'll send those two below. Again, none of this is financial advice. I'm not telling you to go out and buy silver. I'm telling you what I'm gonna do today. Silver's down a dollar right now. I'm literally hanging up this right now, contacting my broker and I'm gonna buy some silver at a discount right? I put my money where my mouth is. Can it go down more? Yes, it can. Will I buy more then? Yes, I will. End of story. That's how it works. I'm dollar cost averaging. I'm not worried about the minutia, the day-to-day -day price minutia. I care more about literally where it's going to be three years from now, four years from now. That's what I get excited about. All right. With that being said, I thank you so much for watching. I'll put that phone number down below. The Economic Ninja is out.